Hello and welcome to For the Quantum Grammar Shoot Podcast, the only podcast of its kind on the internet that I'm aware of. I'm your host, Colin Jason I from Ethical Colin Glass. You may call me Jason. And this is the 124th episode of this podcast. And the title of this podcast, of this episode, is For the Holiday Hyphen Message, period. And it comes on the heels of, uh, well, what I I will relate to you as some personal things. Uh, As those of you who follow me know, I have, I had to put uh, some workshops on hold for a while because I had some health issues. And then I began uh, back in full force doing workshops at the beginning of this week. I had uh, regained full mental clarity. However, uh, the physicality was not 100%. And interestingly enough, um, yesterday, which would be Wednesday, I had a toothache, which had been bothering me for a few weeks, and normally I can take care of these things by myself. It's what I've done for 50-some years. I've been able to take care of most of those things using homeopathic uh, solutions, but this one was very persistent. So I went to the dentist and they had to uh, do some forensics and the dentist came to me. He was a very nice young man and he said, you know, it looks really bad. I really don't know what's going on. You need immediate attention from an orthopedic surgeon. This, of course, was not what I was expecting. And he pretty much looked at me and said, I can't believe you're driving a vehicle and walking around and talking with the amount of infection uh, that is in uh, in and around your, your jaw. Like, the pain must be just, like, tremendous. He said, normally it will take, you know, a month or two to get into an orthopedic surgeon, but that he knew and was friends with one that was about a mile down the road, and that he would get me in in the next 30 minutes, which he did. And so I went down there. They checked me in. They did some more forensics. And long story short, I ended up having a surgery where they gave me lots of Novocaine, and they literally cut a hole in my jaw through my gums this, you know, in a football shape, and they sucked out all of this fluid, which had infected, and th- this was so uh, toxic that it had actually eaten away some of the bone in my skull, like at my septum and things like that. And this had been there for a while, I guess. And uh, well, <clears throat> long story short. That definitely relieved the pressure that I had been feeling for a long time when they took all that poison out of there. They gave me some very strong antibiotics, and that was that. They're going to send the fluid away for testing to see exactly what it was. They did mention some possibilities to me, which I'm not going to repeat here, some of them ranging from, you know temporary uh, maladies that can be pretty much cured all the way down to more uh, dangerous and mortality threatening uh, possibilities all of which I'm, I'm fine with you know as I've shared with my audience in the past death is not something that frightens me at all not at all I don't go looking for it but I'm not going to run from it. 
if it presents itself as the only alternative in a certain scenario. So in any case, that's where I'm at, folks. It's a very um, humbling experience to go through these things. It's a very humbling experience to be reminded of one's mortality. It reminds me, and, and also, by the way, folks, if on my YouTube channel, if you're not paying attention to my community section, the community tab, then you're missing out on some cool stuff. Because I've become posting some non-correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar related material. But it's it's material that I feel is relevant and congruent with quantum grammar and the way that I teach things. It's helpful. It's not distracting. It's practical. A lot of things from G.I. Gurdjieff, who's, uh, who was a teacher of the Fourth Way system. He taught it in the late 1800s throughout to the mid-1900s until he passed away, I think, in the late 40s or 50s. Uh, but in that same spirit, I will offer you a uh, story from Carlos Castaneda, who was, by his own allegations, a Nahual. He was a apprentice of the shaman Nahual, Don Juan Matus, and you, you you can find his stories. It was a uh, his first novel was published in the late sixties. It was called The Teachings of Don Juan, and it was actually classified as an anthropology book because he was an anthropology student, and that was I guess his thesis for his class. But then that kind of springboarded into eleven more books having to do with Don Juan, and they're great books, by the way, great books. Whether they're fiction or fact, I, I don't know. But they're great books, especially The Fire from Within and The Active Side of Infinity. In any case, to get back to what I was saying about death and be re uh, reminded of one's mortality, Don Juan had a saying that death is the best advisor. Because if a man looks over his left shoulder and sees death there, that's how he would live that moment, moment to moment always knowing that death is right there over your shoulder. And at any moment, he can tap you. So this is the, I guess, preface to my holiday message to all you folks out there listening. And I'm trying to take into account all of my audience. Not only my subscribers, not only my wonderful members, who support this channel on a consistent basis, but also those lurkers, the haters, the trolls, the ones out there in the, for example, the Syntax Learning Center, whom I know for a fact, watch this channel and learn from what I teach and then go back and implement it into their own courses and then sell it to people but, of course, they never give me any credit. That's fine. That's been going on for years, ever since the Red Thumb Club. When uh, Mari Shapka used to contact me asking me grammar questions. He would be friendly on the one hand and ask me questions about grammar, about conjunctions, and this, that, and the third. And then on the, on the other hand, when you get into the Red Thumb Club meetings, he would, you know, slander me and... Oh, he's a thief and he's a piece of shit and blah, 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 blah. You know, it's just these two-faced types of individuals. But that's fine. I wish them happy holidays. I wish them success in everything they're doing except for scamming people. I do not wish them success in scamming people. But I do wish them success in stopping trespass and 
doing good for their fellow mankind if that is their volition. But I do not wish them well in scamming. Uh, I wish that those people who look up to and follow uh, Colin Russell, I have J. Colin Gould, I hope that, I, I wish that they gain the wisdom and critical thinking to take a look at what exactly it is they've gotten themselves into and to perhaps take a closer look at the grammar and uh, maybe get a different perspective on what it is they've chosen to involve themselves in. And the same thing goes for the followers of Mark Lowercase K. Kishon Christopher. I hope that they uh, gain a modicum of critical thinking and uh, gain wisdom in looking at exactly what they've gotten themselves into. And also, you know, all the other individuals out there who claim to teach correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, but do not have closure on the grammar, such as the quantum grammar coach. I think his first name is Derek. I'm not sure. I don't, I'm not sure, but I, I'm aware of him. I hope that uh, at some point he decides to get closure on the grammar so that when he does do a, you know, charge people money to take a language course that he knows what he's talking about rather than um, selling incomplete knowledge. And by the way, the Derek fellow, I don't think he's a bad fellow at all. I don't. I don't know what's going on there. I really don't. I've I've left him, you know, he's contacted me and I've left messages for him actually saying, hey, you want to learn this grammar or complete your knowledge level, go ahead and get a hold of me. But he never did. But I don't think he's a bad person. I think he's just an independent thinker, and for whatever reason, I guess he doesn't know what he doesn't know. Just like I don't know what I don't know. Maybe there's something I'm missing. I'm not sure. If you think there is, dear viewer, point it out to me, please. With regards to the grammar, not anything else, just the grammar. Just the grammar, because that's the main focus of this. Thinking about this holiday season, of course, it's celebrated in many, many different ways in many, many different cultures. In my mind, from my perception and my position, the way I look at Christmas is that it's, uh, it, there is a such thing as the Christmas spirit, okay? And what I mean by that is, People seem to be more kind, more gentle, more empathic around this time of year. And I feel that that's what is meant by the Christmas spirit. Now, you, of course, you can go outside of that and say, well, it's about commercialism. Of course it is. This is a capitalist country. Of course they want you to buy stuff. Everything has a price. It's what keeps the gears, you know, turning. It is a commercial holiday. It has nothing to do with anything other than making money, pretty much. At least that's all anyone really cares about when it comes down to it at the end of the day. I mean, if you have money to buy your family presents, that makes them happy. If you have money to put food on the table, cool. But there are also people that don't have money to buy presents and don't have money for food and are starving. So keep that in mind. Um, to get back to the roots of the holiday, I mean, basically, uh, as with most things, rooted in paganism. And even before that, you know that there was once a time in the U.S. in the 1600s, well, it wasn't actually the United States then, it was the colonies, 
in the 1600s when I can't remember what what state it was. I'm not even going to guess because I don't I don't want to guess wrong. But there was a state in the colonies in like around 1650 that outlawed Christmas for 22 years because they felt that it was uh, a very pagan thing to do and it took away from the glory of their God, their Puritan God. And so Christmas was illegal in that, in that colony for 22 years. Isn't that crazy? And then, you, you know, you got the phonetic word games you can play with the word Santa Claus, Satan's Claus. I found out, do you know why, folks, that Santa, Santa's outfit is red and white? Do you know why that is? It's a very simple explanation. That outfit, that iconic Santa Claus outfit, was created in an ad campaign by Coca-Cola a long time ago. And it just stuck with it. Now, there was a Santa Claus. Well, actually, there was no such thing as Santa Claus until I think it was a movie that came out in the early 1900s that introduced Santa Claus. I highly recommend going to a channel called Mind Unveiled on YouTube and look up their History of Christmas video, or I don't know what the title of it is. But if you're curious, you can look it up. And they give a lot of cool uh, stories about where Christmas came from, what it's rooted in, the history of St. Nicholas, Yada, yada, yada. Really interesting stuff. Might as well go into the myth of, uh, myth of the birth of the Christ child as well. Um, no one knows if a entity known as Jesus Christ was ever born or ever lived. Nobody really knows that. There's no proof of it except in, of course, the Bible. Pretty much, though, if such a being existed, was not born on December 25th. And supposedly, uh, where I can't remember where I read this. Now, again, keep in mind, folks, this is a podcast of opinion. So you can write me all the emails you want saying I'm wrong and blah, 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 blah. That's cool. This is a podcast of opinion but that there was no town called Bethlehem. There was no place called Nazareth at the time that Jesus was supposedly born. Think about this, folks. Think about this. That whole story is an allegory. But I'm not even going to go into that. For me, the value of these types of religious stories doesn't have to be taken in a literal sense. I can take them in an allegorical sense and appreciate them. But I'm not going to take them in a literal sense and I'm certainly not going to take them in a literal sense as the actual adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, fraudulent conveyance of grammar word of a presumed omnipotent entity. If I were to do that, for me, personally, would be the height of stupidity because of who I am and what it is that I do on this Grammar Channel talking about facts. But that's for me personally. I'm not projecting that onto anyone else out there. So I'd like to, off the top of my head, give thanks to some people, I'm going to name some names. I'm going to use first names or, you know, I don't want to put anybody in a lurch or anything like that that doesn't want their name mentioned. But I'm just going to mention the people that I do know 
wouldn't mind. Again, I give thanks to the members that actually contribute value to this channel to keep it afloat. Very much appreciated. The people who participate the most on this channel and our members, like Daryl Bennett, my main man, Bennett Gang, on top, man, for real. Uh, Preston Henry, he's always asking good questions and and uh, commenting and participating. Uh, I know that there's a guy on here that uses the username for the claimant, I think it is. I'd like to thank him, too. He's got some really good correct sentence structure going on that he learned, not from taking workshops, but from watching the channel. So thank you very much for that. Oh, his name is James. Pretty sure his name is James. And apologies, folks. Um, I'm not real good with names. That's why I have to write everything down and I keep meticulous records so that I don't forget things like this. But I'm just free-forming this, so <laughs> it is what it is. Who else? Uh, one of my best students, Pascal. He's, uh, he's a very studious and motivated self-studier. We're, we're doing workshops, but he, he doesn't slack off in between workshops. He keeps working and working and working. Uh, who else? Um, of course, my brother Ricardo, he has his own channel, Raise Wisdom. I'm not sure what he's doing with correct sentence structure right now, at this point in time. But I know he always has my back. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, my friend, brother, and uh, longtime tutor, Colin Raven. Appreciate him. And uh, always be in there for me if I need a, if I have a question or anything like that. He's always there. And it goes without saying, my beautiful wife, who has supported me through all of this and uh, is always there for me and has my back. I'm trying to think of some other folks. Special shout out to my brother Josh, who is from a place where everything is bigger. And he always hooks me up with, you know, if I need one by 1.9 flag stickers or uh, no trespassing placards or signs. He always hooks me up with uh, syntax placards, uh, among a host of other things. He even got me, jeez, uh, he sent me so many gifts. Such a cool guy. Sent me a GoPro, sent me a uh, soft lighting for my videos. Much love to you, Josh. Um, I can't thank you enough for, for everything you've done. Of course, got to give thanks to the man, Colin David Ivan Colin Miller. Um, I hope he's resting comfortably wherever he is or, or not doing work, whatever he's doing. I hope he's happy and he's blessed. Um, it was a blessing to speak to him as much as I did in the last year of his life. I can't claim that I was his friend, but I can claim that he answered the phone whenever I called him. He answered the email whenever I emailed him or texted him or Skype or whatever. He was there when he could be until the time when he couldn't. And I got to put out a thanks to Colin Russell hyphen J. Colin Gould for the communications that we had between 2017 and January of 2020 and for all of the videos that he was involved with prior to 2016. The videos that he released after that, not a big fan of. But before that, dude was dropping knowledge at a rapid pace. And I thank him for that. 
and I thank for the work that he did. And, uh, of course, without him and David, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. But that doesn't mean I have to kiss anybody's ass, folks. Keep that in mind. You can be grateful, but you don't have to be subservient. It's not what that means. And, uh... Gotta give a shout out to Ivandian, who is a member of this channel. Folks, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop a bomb on you right now, okay? I haven't really spoken I haven't really spoke too much about this in the past. But it's really exciting me because I can really see the potential of this and the probability of it actually coming to pass. I've had lots of people tell me, hey, I'm going to get closure on this grammar and I'm going to translate it into Spanish. I've had, do you know, not dozens, but a lot of people, multiple people tell me that. And, you know, it's exciting. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, cool. But they never follow through. They just don't. Well, guess what, folks? Ivanian is a different breed. Ivanian is actually doing it. Ivanian, who's first language is, is Spanish and his English is probably well it's a lot better than he thinks it is but it's not the best because it's not his native tongue he has learned correct sentence structure and he uh, let's put it this way he has more closure on correct sentence structure than the syntax learning center I can tell you that as a fact by comparing the work, by comparing the documents. You can't hide your knowledge level when you create a correct sentence structure, document, contract, postal vessel, court venue. You can't hide it. The errors are there if you don't know it, or there will be no errors there if you do know it. And Ivandian knows it. He's not quite 100% yet, but he's almost there. He knows more than they do, that's for sure. And he is literally translating correct sentence structure into Spanish. He's working it out. He's putting the work in. And I'm really excited to share some of those things with you in the coming months. Now, I will say this, folks. If I don't, I made the, the drogue that if I don't reach 6,000 subscribers by January 1st, 2024, then I'm shutting down the public uh, section of this YouTube channel. And I'm only going to be publishing uh, members only videos, tier two loyalist contributor uh, tier. So these videos having to do with Spanish, using Spanish in quantum grammar. Those are going to be in the members section because I have a feeling, you know, I am hopeful that we will reach 6,000 by January 1st, but I really don't think we will. So that will be in the members section. And of course, my email address will always be there. And if you want to do a workshop, you can just contact me, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. And you can peruse the whole 900 or so videos that will always be available to the public on this channel whether I publish new material or not so that's always going to be a resource for you but moving forward these uh, going into the Spanish and stuff is probably just going to be in the members only section because those are the rules and the limitations that I set on it so really folks it's up to you you Everyone listening to this, if you share this channel and get one or two friends to subscribe, we could easily reach 6,000 or more subs by January 1st. But that's up to you. You can manifest it. You just have to do it. I feel like I've put thousands and thousands of hours into this stuff. And uh, at this point... 
unless a new, you know, unless this plateau is, is uh, overcome, I'm pretty much tapped out as far as this stuff goes. Uh, but that could just be like the pain and discomfort talking because I just had my mouth ripped open yesterday. And uh, not feeling the best <laughs> physically. So shout out to Ivandian. He's a pioneer. He's literally a trailblazer with this stuff. And he is serious about it. And he is honorable and graceful. He's a man of his word. Hats off to him. I would be remiss and negligent if I didn't also send some well wishes to all those soft, sick, common law folks out there that aren't my biggest fans. And I'm sure, you know, if I say they're not my biggest fans or whatever, they'd find something to argue about as far as that statement goes. But I, I wish them happy holidays as well. I wish them blessings. And I'd also like to thank all of my home companions who round out my biosphere. My boy Snowby, my boy Oslo, the girls Katie and Willow, and of course, Mama. And my favorite dinosaur pterodactyl, Scarlet Macaw, Birdie. Which usually makes himself known at some point during these videos. I'm in a different room, so he can't hear me now, so you can't hear him. And uh, that about does it for my holiday message. I, I wish everyone has, you know, happy holidays with their families, their friends, their loved ones, whatever the holiday means to them. It's cool with me. I don't care if you're a Jew, a Muslim, a Christian, a Buddhist, a Satanist, a pagan, whatever you are, Hindu. I wish you all the best and happiness as long as you're not harming others. And, okay, before people <laughs> jump all over it that I said the word Satanist, do any of you actually know what a Satanist is? Or are you just going by an assumption of what you think it is and what you're told it is? Because Satanism, in the modern sense, at least in the mainstream media type sense is not what you think it is. Satanism is basically atheism. But there is a certain mm, segment of individuals back in the 50s or 60s that felt so strongly about Christianity and Judaism and monotheism like they disagreed with it so strongly that they wanted to create something in opposition to that. And that's what they did. And that's how the Satanic Temple, or I'm sorry, the Church of Satan came into being. And then the offshoot, the Temple of Set and all that stuff. <clears throat> now, what it is, they, you know, people say, well, you don't know what it is they really do. You know, you're right, I don't, because I'm not a Satanist, nor do I care to be. I know, you know, just like everybody else, what I can prove and what I can't prove. What I can't prove is these, uh, you know, sort of fantastical allegations of crazy rituals and demons and blood sacrifices and things like that. Yeah, I don't have any uh, concrete proof of that. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm not saying that there isn't a segment of society that does really sick and twisted things. And I'm certainly not saying that that, if there are, you know, those people in that segment of society that do those horrible things, 
I'm not saying that they shouldn't get what they deserve because they should, just like everybody gets what they deserve. There's no doubt what side of the fence I'm on as far as that stuff goes. What I'm saying, friends and neighbors, is just be careful about passing judgments before you have all the facts. That's rule one, rule equal judge mechanics. You can hear all sorts of bad stuff about somebody. As a matter of fact, if you would go to, say for example, Russell J. Gould's website or Mark Lord Case Cake Jones website, and you don't know nothing about me, Colin Jason Ivan Matthew Colin Glass, and you look at, you know, they do mention me on both of their websites, and they don't say very nice things about me. If you just take their word for it, you've already condemned me, even though you don't know me or you've never researched me. So there you are passing a judgment based on presumption. Because you, for whatever reason, agree with Russell or Mark. That's why you don't really hear me talk negative about someone's personality. The only thing I really can... Uh, criticize is the grammar like I will say things like Russell J. Gould I have not seen any evidence that he has closure on correct sentence structure based upon his documents and the public because there are mistakes all over him I'll say things like that same thing with Mark but just like people who are so attached to a religious ideology if you criticize the religious ideology they're so emotionally connected to it that they feel like you're attacking them personally and it's the same thing when I criticize Russell's grammar his followers take it personally like I'm attacking him and therefore attacking them and then they get mad and they send death threats and threaten to beat me up and all kinds of stuff <clears throat> which by the way folks I have the email saved I have the proof of these things if anyone's listening, I have it. All right. Thank you very much for listening to this holiday message. It's not your average holiday message, that's for sure. But it's mine. And I'm offering it to you. If you're listening to this right now, I hope that you have the happiest and blessed of holidays. And I hope you have a great new year. Thank you. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.